Amen. Jesus is risen and He is risen for all of us. And as He's come, we give thanks for everything that He's done in our lives. Amen. 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 As we come together this morning, and we know the sun is out there somewhere, right? Yeah, the sun came up, and we rejoice at what God has done in each and every day. When I was a child, we lived way back in the woods, and at night it would just get super dark. And we, we really didn't have a nightlight in the back or anything, and my brother and I uh, stayed in a room that was on the back side of our house, and man, when it was dark, it was dark. And I can remember becoming afraid of something, I heard a noise outside or something that bothered me or woke me up. And I can remember there in my bed being so frightened, I was just kind of trembling. And uh, where I lived, we didn't have blankets, we had quilts. You know, I don't know if uh, y'all had quilts when you were growing up, but we had these quilts that my grandmother had made. And that was what the blanket was on our bed. So I would take that quilt. In the South, we just call them the covers, you know. And you'd, you'd raise the covers all the way up, and I'd do it all the way under my nose. And I would, for some reason, I thought, I'm safe as long as I'm under the covers all the way up to my nose. But then, and then I would slowly, slowly, finally drift off to sleep. But I remember that when I would see the daylight start to peek through the windows on the outside outlines of the boundaries of the windows, I would feel this great sense of relief that night time's over, that darkness has ceased. You know, all the way through the Bible, and especially in John's Gospel, uh, every time you see a reference to darkness, you're seeing a reference to evil. When Judas Iscariot left the uh, Last Supper event before Jesus had the uh, communion service with his uh, disciples. The Bible says when Judas went out of the place, it was night. And it reminds us of the darkness of evil around us. And we may look at our culture and our world and see that darkness all around us, but the wonderful light of Christ brings us that sense of relief, doesn't it? He's always with us. He's always beside us. Uh, let me read some scripture for you first from John chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. It says, In Christ was life, and life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. That, another word for that, didn't overtake it. Because the light of Christ overwhelms and overtakes everything else that it touches, and the darkness can't overwhelm the light of Jesus. He also said, Jesus himself calling him hit this phrase, uh, calling himself this in John 11 at when he was about to raise Lazarus from the dead. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. The wonderful thing about uh, knowing that the sun's shining, even though it's hidden behind those clouds, is the fact that it reminds us there's a brand new day. There's a brand new opportunity. There's a brand new joy in our life. And that's the way it was on that first Resurrection Sunday. When the ladies went to the tomb and they were told, He's not here. He's risen just as He said. And then we have the other further uh, examples of, of uh, John and Peter running to the tomb. And the amazing thing about John, he didn't even have to go in the tomb. He just kind of looked in saw that Jesus was gone, and he believed. Peter had to get in there and see everything. But it all came back to the joy and the blessing of God doing something significant on the break of that new day. The sunlight of Christ breaks out, and it brings us a new joy, a new and a glorious day. Let me share just two or three things with you. It brings those new opportunities. The darkness and the evil of this world can't take those opportunities away that you have today. You have an opportunity to, to live out your joy today. You have an opportunity to be blessed by God today. You have an opportunity to fellowship with other believers in Christ today. 
You, God may put all kinds of things in your path that will bless you if you'll just look for those opportunities in the, the new day that God's given you as the sunlight's broken out uh, in our lives. You also have a new vision. Uh, the world is uh, full of despair and discouragement and always has been. And it's not because of God, it's because of us. Our sin causes the discouragement and despair in the world, not the Lord. And Jesus being alive reminds us that we have a new vision every single day. And everything about this world is more understandable in the light of Christ. So we can trust him. We know that the darkness can't overtake what God did for us in the resurrection. Amen? Amen. So we have new opportunities and new vision, and we also have new hope available every single day. Every day you wake up, you have a new hope and a new opportunity to go out into this world and share that hope with somebody else. Now, you may be here this morning without knowing for sure that you have hope in Christ. I just want to remind you that God has an open invitation for all of us to come in, uh, come unto Him. And Jesus said it, Come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. The rest that Christ gives is that He shines out into the darkness of this world, and no matter how ugly and evil and overwhelming it looks, the light of Christ cannot be overtaken or, or overwhelmed by this world. Jesus has died for all of us, but the good news is, he rose again and gave us victory over death for all of us. So he's risen. He's risen indeed. In the first Christian century, new believers would meet each other in the marketplace and on the street. And they'd simply, one would say, he is risen. And the other would respond, he is risen indeed. And it's because they knew the light even in their uh, difficult circumstance, being under Roman rule and oppression, Yet they knew Christ was their light, and he was the, their light and their salvation, just like David talks about in the Old Testament. I'm going to read one more verse for you, and then we're going to pray. But as we think about it, I want you to know that even though we have the sun and the moon and the stars that give us light here on earth, one day we're not going to need any of those. Because the New Jerusalem is talked about in Revelation 21. And that city is so amazing, the Bible says, the city had no need of the sun or the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it, in the, and the Lamb is its light. So we have the Lamb of Christ, who is the light of the world in us today. We have the promise of eternal life that lives in the light of the Lamb in the new Jerusalem forever. And you, even if you've never made that choice before, can simply pray and God says uh, His Son and His Spirit will come into your heart and come into your life. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts God raised Him from the dead, we shall be saved. You can call on the name of the Lord this morning and be saved and know that you have the light that overcomes the darkness in the world. If you'll just be willing to confess to him that you've sinned. Confess to him that you need him. Confess to him that you believe that he rose from the dead, just like the Bible says. Will you do that this morning if you've never done it before? Will you listen to it? And believers, will you go out into the world today and proclaim, he is risen, he is risen indeed, his light shines in your life out in the darkness of an evil world. But his light cannot be overtaken or overwhelmed by the darkness of this world. You'll make a difference if you'll live that way. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the joy of our salvation. For every one of us who believe, we just give you all the praise and glory and honor for this day. We pray that you'll unite us together with one big mission, to shine your light out in the world and reflect your glory to people who need the saving knowledge of Jesus. 
And Father God, I pray for anybody who might be listening today, whether online or out here in this parking lot, that Father, if they have never given their heart to you, that right now this morning they would consider their need and the joy that they could have every day knowing that the light of Christ shines through them and can never be overwhelmed by the darkness of this world. Thank you, God, that you promise us that light right now and that light forever with you. We pray all these things in the powerful, saving name of our risen Lord, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
You are dismissed. dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> All right.